I am Mark, and this is a huge. Yeah. Um, so our sin was called the 555, um, which is actually kind of funny because we thought it was like, like five minutes before it was due. And <laughs> because it's actually, so the Sherwood sued sin, and since all of our Latin names start with S's, we replaced them with five. What's the name right uh, don't worry about it. We'll explain in just a second. So um, we, we started this project with the mindset that we really wanted to get meeting working. Um, so the first thing we did was we got rid of everything we did in Lab 4 and rebuilt it. Uh, we kept the sign reader, and after that, we basically redid the song reader. We redid the what else? Was there? There was, uh, the note players, the note players. just a shell. Exactly. So the way it works is we have box, think of it as a black box, and you can tell it which notes to play, you give it a note in, a ballad in, and a uh, note on off, and you can tell it to go on, it keeps track of like that note and plays it, and if you tell it to turn that note off, all you have to do is give it that note and say turn it off, it will turn it off. So there's this uh, thing inside that keeps track of what notes you're currently playing, so it can keep track of what to turn on and off. Um, so the over general, general overview of our uh, project is, it consists of a harm, it like has harmonics, it has dynamics, um, it has chords, and it has voices. Um, and we initially meant to implement all of those in MIDI, uh, but we didn't get all of the voices stuff done. Uh, right now it does have harmonics, dynamics, and chords. Um, the way that harmonics works is pretty simple. Um, we have this voice FSM, which is essentially a voice which gives it, uh, you give it parameters for the dynamics, as well as, uh, well as uh, the harmonics. That gets passed along to this harmonizer module, which um, in essence harmonizes the note. And then that gets passed on to the dynamics module, which provides the attack, sustain, attack, release, sustain, decay. Um, and instead of using multipliers, because we were kind of afraid, and this is actually a little bad on our part, we prematurely optimized, um, but it worked out anyway. We decided to write ROMs for each of the exponential decays. Um, and that basically takes care of uh, the case. So once we did that, we realized we had nothing to test with uh, because our song reader from our previous modules was completely useless. So the first thing we did was we built a song reader. Um, we called it the Better Song Reader uh, for the life of Better. And this is what you're actually seeing right now. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll explain why you can't hear it. <laughs> so if you guys are really quiet, can you hear it playing? Yeah. So the way it works is we have four voices inside, instantiated inside um, our, our um, synth. The four voices inside have four notes each, right? And those four notes um, are broken into four note players. So we have a total 64 note players running at the same time. And uh, one thing that we actually didn't get around to fixing was, um, it's not really a bug, uh, if all notes are playing, but if you only have, right now you, you have a maximum of four notes. So four out of the 64 notes, note players are playing, so you're hearing like the actual full sound divided by 64 times four. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can use that, but whatever. Um, so this is... You um, need a master game control on the other. Exactly. So uh, <laughs> one thing we were doing is like we're playing just some of the, uh, the places where we reduce, where we divide by four, uh, or shift left two. Um, but and just like cap it off if it eventually, like it, it's a beat. But we just didn't get around to doing that because we have other cool things we want to show you that we worked on. Uh, so once we got that going, we realized that it's really simple to um, make anything that kind of interfaces with um, this synth because all you have to do is be able to tell it to turn the note on and off. So I wrote a serial protocol. Um, we used our Arduino to kind of connect the uh, PGA. Um, that essentially allows you to say turn this note on. You type it in. You say note this and you know on and place it. And you can say this note turn off and it turns it off. Um, and then eventually I decided to hook up a connect to it. Um, and uh, we were going to draw you guys a piano on the keyboard or on the board, but it's really really hard to like do that when you don't know where exactly the piano is. So if you guys look at um, <laughs> hold on, I have to change the mode of this uh, to. Um, so if you guys look at this screen, what you see is like, can you see the keys, mm -hmm. right? Um, and essentially those correspond to like, if I put my hand in, I don't know if you guys can see the hand. Yeah, I can see it. But like, if I go, yeah. I can tap a note, that's my hand that's detecting. 
Um, so if it goes in, uh, it's really Why does that one stay on? Uh, it has some issues if you try to play multiple notes. Yeah, like okay. You can only send one off at a time. Oh, I see. So, so we do have problems with the chords at the moment, but <laughs> you can detect your hands. Uh, well, chords in the sense only for the hands. Um, <laughs> the rest of the chords work. And I can like touch a note and it'll play it. So if anyone wants to uh, come and try it, you guys are more than welcome to do That's the board. That's why moves. Where do I stand? So basically, the way, that, <laughs> all right, um, the way the MIDI works is um, I grab the MIDI song, um, and then we run it through a C program to put it into a ROM style. And the ROM style is just um, you feed the ROM an address, and it'll give you that byte out of the file. Um, and so then our file reader comes in. Um, and the most difficult part about MIDI by far is the timing of when you're supposed to execute which commands. Um, so the way the MIDI file format is, is for each command, they'll start with a delta time, and that's the time you're supposed to wait before you execute the command. Um, and it was pretty tricky because um, it's variable length, which means that it can be X number of bytes, depending on how big the number is. Um, so we have a module that takes care of that. Um, and so we turn that module on whenever we need a variable length, and it spits back the entire result. Um, and so the MIDI file format gets that, and then it has to go through the command and parse it and act accordingly. How, how do you um, load the MIDI files? Are they loaded into a RAM on the yeah. PGA? They're on the ROM. They're on, they're on the ROM. ROM. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. They just, um, we just translate them into bytes. They're part of the bit file. Like yeah. 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 Um, and all right. So I was trying to do the MIDI file reader as we were before, just like with normal lo um, logic, and it really wasn't working um, because the file format is really made up to be very sequential uh, because it's supposed to be done with programming. Um, so I, I switched to microcode, because that was really the only way to do it. Um, and so the microcode goes through the 20 to 30 states for the MIDI player, um, and accesses and gives out different commands depending on what's going on. Yeah, it's a little, little mini computer. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah um, so if you really want to hear it, you guys are more than welcome to cry around the speakers. Um, <laughs> take places on the Oh, is it playing? Yeah, it's a classic song. Yeah, we didn't get around to like, figuring out the actual like, dynamics uh, and like, the harmonics, like, the actual number. 
So which was harder to implement, the Connect interface or the MIDI? It's a, the MIDI. It's a, well, that's incredibly ambitious. Thanks, guys.